Okay, so to finish his hat, we need a little dark blue stripe too. So I'm just gonna go in on, I guess, the right side of those little stripes. Now they match his scarf. Um, the star is done. Uh, the moon is done. She doesn't really do anything to that. Oh, he needs a sparkle in his eye. So on the tip of that script liner, some white paint. And I'm going to just, using the very tip, put a teeny dot on the upper right of each eye. Okay, and that just kind of brings it to life. Now we need the arms, and they are burnt umber. It's the same color we just used for the twigs. So if I could find it, damn it. I have some, but I use most of it. Um, and you know what? It would be a gr if you want to trace your arms on, go ahead and trace them on. Um, just, you know what? I'm going to use a pencil and I'm just going to look at my other one. Here's my tracing actually. So I'm just lazy, guys. It's really just a matter of laziness, honestly. Um, and the arm comes down out of his vest, like kind of from the scarf, like he has a hole in his vest up there. And then excuse me it goes out and then there's a little piece that goes down and then on this side there's an arm sticking out over here kind of near the moon okay so those are pretty good I'm gonna take my burnt umber and I'm gonna go right over that with my script liner in a similar way that we just did the ones that go around the piece you just want to kind of let the paint, my brush is really loaded well, and I'm going to set it down and just kind of wiggle it down onto his body and out. So that's a branch, a bent branch. He's holding the star. We'll put a hook on that in a minute. Well, not a hook, but a you-know-what thing. Same thing here with the, just let it, let the brush do the work. And that's kind of, he's got long arms. And then let them dry. I'm gonna get a little bit of black. Um, we need to hang that um, star from his arm. So I'm gonna start here I'm pretty sure she traced this too, yeah. And I'm just gonna go around and down to the middle here, like there's a hole. And then on the other side, connect it and go behind the star. And that gives the illusion that it's like hanging from his arm. So he, I'm pretty sure I hit everything on him besides any snow that I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some snow on his hat and on probably on the end of his nose and on his arms we're going to put snow like we did on the fence but before we do that we're going to put our um any little pine needles so we need two colors of green i think i used it couldn't be black green let me read yeah black green the first set of needles are black green so that's a dark dark green and then the second is called avocado dip which i didn't have that color and i actually it's not even in my conversion book so I just grabbed avocado, because I can't imagine what avocado dip looks like. Probably lighter, I don't know. But they're, they're definitely, um, one's lighter and one's darker, so that's what you want to get. A dark green and a light green. And she said to put your dark ones down first, and don't put too many. So maybe eight of each color, I'm saying, but you don't want to cover up what you put down either. He also has some sticking out from under his hat. Let me see if she tells what color they are. Um, paint a thin line of orange. Let's see. Paint thin line of orange. Vest wears hat. Okay. Paint the stripes and shade in the same manner. Where the heck? Blush his cheeks. Oh, see, we didn't blush his cheeks either. Paint the eyes. Dot the eyes. Paint pine needles coming from under his hat with a brush mix of black, green, and avocado. So kind of like these two colors. 
only she just wants you to mix them. So I'm just going to mix them just right here. A little puddle of that. And I'm just going to like kind of give him some hair kind of coming out of his hat. Just little pine needle-y looking things like bangs. You know, he's cool. That's it, just for a decoration. They're very, they're very willy-nilly, these. They're not very organized at all, but I'm leaving it. I'm good with it. All right, so we're going to do this. I'm going to turn my palette around. And first, we're going to do the dark green. So I'm making it inky because you want these and use the, the littlest brush you have, the script liner or something like that, because these should really be kind of thinner. And I like to take anywhere I've made a little end piece and make that where the pine needles go. And I'm just, I don't know what she, does she have a good picture of what hers look like? Because, yeah, she does. On the line drawing, look, that's a very good representation of, so she might make a little thing and then put one, two, three, four, four on each side. That's it. And you're going to, you know, I mean, there's fewer in some places. Um, and there's more in some. So, but basically, you know, you're just going to kind of make them come out of uh, a stem. So kind of make a stem area and then make some pine needles come out of that. And hers are fairly long as well. Um, and I think I'll put one here. You can put some close together and some far apart. Like I'll put one. But you really do want these to these lines to be fine, I think. I think it looks nicer. But it might look good too with them thicker. I don't know. Um and for the final step. We're going to add snow to the whole piece uh, all over, like little places here and there on top of things, and then the little dots for the, in the background. And then we're pretty much done. So I hope this has been helpful, and I'm actually really looking forward to painting the other one now. I have that based, and... Uh, I can put my pattern on and really start, you know, I, I think I'm going to film that too. I have to get all my batteries charged up again. But um, on a rainy day like this, this is it. I painted for years and it's just so calm and I love it. I mean, you could put the TV on in the background and um, that was kind of cool. My brush kind of split. And it was almost making two lines at once. So. Um, but like, when I would go to classes too, everyone painted at their own pace at Vicky's. We just, because uh, by the time we'd been painting together for so long, she wasn't really teaching anymore. She was, we were just hanging out. And, uh, you know, if you needed help, she would come over and help you. But for the most part, um, it was just fun. It was more of a social thing at that point. Um, you know, I took all the classes I needed for instruction at seminars and, um, um, convention is what I'm trying to say. It looks like I need one on this side over here somewhere. I have a lot going in. Um, one more like right. See, I'm, I think I'm getting carried away. I, I probably don't need one more at all. Right here. I do. I need one more. <laughs> Up top. Like, let's see. 
right here. All right, so that's done. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna go into that lighter green and get that really inky. See, I just, I didn't blot. I just went right to the um, paint and let that water drop go right in there. And then you just see it's still, water's still coming off my brush. But now I have it like ink, it's wet. I'm gonna go back and you don't wanna go over everything you've just done and cover that color. You just want to add to it, so I've just got mortar everywhere. Hopefully I'll stay in the shot, guys. I'll try. And, you know, this color isn't really, really um, a lot lighter, so it's a very subtle change. So maybe you want to use a, like a more vibrant or a, like even a fluorescent green or something. You know what? You could put gold, that gold that I love. What the heck color is this? My metallic glorious gold. And you, I mean, you can hit it here and there with that anywhere you want. You know, it's your piece. Add your style to it. Add your um, design elements, you know. That's what I love about this. It gives you... A, a starting point and you know you you know where you're going with it but it's everyone and even if like these two that I've painted are gonna look so different um, you know they're just they're just they just are they're not gonna be the same so you know what people used to say too when after a class sometimes we'd have an eight-hour seminar where we would go in the morning and paint all morning and then you have a lunch break a nice hour lunch break usually it was potluck and people brought stuff and it was awesome and then you know some chocolate and back to painting and um, you know you were exhausted by the end of the day um, but that's when we brought in the big tea and her name is Sonia Richardson is the name I've always tried I have tons of her stuff around this room specifically <laughs> Um, she used to come in a lot to our chapter. I think she painted with us three times. And, uh, you know, you'd be exhausted by the end of the day. <laughs> and people would go around looking at everyone's work and comparing their work. And, you know, some happier than others. <laughs> but most times you would hear at the next meeting when we got together that something happens to your piece in the trunk of the car on the way home. The paint fairies come and when you take it out, it looks wonderful. Like it's, you're so hard on yourself for the most part, you know? So you need to step back, take your time, take away from it, go away from it, <clears throat> come in with a new perspective <clears throat> and <clears throat> it's gonna look good. So I hope you've at least learned something. I'm gonna get some white on my brush now. I'm gonna Got some fresh weight out too, why not? Um, and sign your piece too. We're gonna sign it. I signed mine. The other one, I'm gonna get this wet and put some um, puddles or piles of snow here and there on the piece. I'm gonna do his hat real quick. And I just like to start kind of like a little piece here and then push down and make it like a bigger puddle gotten there. Cute, right? And then a little bit on the brims too. And I'm going to put a little bit on the tip of his nose. I think it looks cute. And on his arms, she has it. It also makes his arms pop out a little better too. Kind of, and then thicker in the corner. I definitely touched it and it messed up um, <clears throat> but it just makes it that actually makes that show up better and it can make it thicker in places I like that thin to thick look like it mounded up in certain places um, where else on this arm so thin to thick to thin 
you know, and that's just picking up the brush, pushing down the brush harder. That's basically it for that, okay? So let's see. I mean, you could put a little on the star, but she outlined her star. She used a pen. It's on the directions. A micro, a micron something pen, and she did stitch work around it and little... Oh, but we still need the white because it's on the pine um, branches too. Look, see on here? I just did hit and miss little piles of snow in little nooks and crannies like it would after a fresh snow just on the top areas here and there um, so not everywhere and I'm kind of just going to make it on anything that's like from the top type thing so like right here looks like a good spot and if down in the snow it's not going to show so like up here make sure I'm in the shot and have paint on my brush and kind of go thin, thick, thin. That's the idea anyway. So thin, thick, thin. Like it kind of puddled in there. You know, that's the idea. I keep saying that. But it's the idea. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put one here. And here. So I'm trying to keep it so the snow came down. It wouldn't be under, you know. It could be in here. Right? And in here. Um, on this branch. You're not going to see it as well once we get down here, but like here. And here. Sorry I keep saying here. <laughs> But it's, you know, it feels good. How about there and there and there? I think that's gorgeous. Oh, we still need berries. So I think, let's see what color the berries are. Got the berries with burgundy wine. I don't have burgundy wine. I had, what did I have? Burgundy rose or something? What the heck? I'm blind, you guys. I see Mendicino for some reason. Here it is. Burgundy rose. Look at the difference. So one's a little bit more barn reddish, and this is, uh, I like, this is kind of more, um, you know what? I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to do this one. Stick with the burgundy rose. It's a more burgundy. That's more red or like pink, actually, like a fuchsia. And then I'm going to use my stylus. And this is the little tiny stylus one, but I'm going to go bump it up and I'm going to do the, like, not tiny because maybe my first dot will be this size, but I usually do three. And all you got to do to do these is just go into your paint, fresh puddle of paint, dip into it, touch down, touch down, touch down. See how they, you have three, um, sizes I like that so you're gonna do that every time you um, want to make a berry cluster you do you touch into the paint so load and touch down touch down touch down and these aren't gonna have stems they're just kind of free hanging in the in the breeze here um, hoping I'm in the shot uh, hmm Try not to make them too close together, but it's going to happen sometimes, you know. And I mean, I've painted pieces with berries that you can get real intricate with these. And you're going to shade and highlight every berry and stuff. This is really just a cute piece. You don't need it. You just, it's just a subtle addition, you know. And you don't have to shade it all. and You get the point. There's berries. Super cute. Now look. Oops, sorry. Out of the shot. All right. And then the last thing is to put the, um, you know what, though? I want to do one more thing. I lost, see, and this is just because I'm a stickler, and I probably can't do it now. I'll have to do it later because I lost some definition here. Like... 
Maybe not. This side you can see really well that it's his belly, but this side kind of doesn't look as defined to me like this one did. You can see like his body, and I think it's because I used the other stippling brush and it was a like softer technique. But anyway, so for this one, I'll, before I stick my hands in the berries, I'm going to show you what how I made the snow on this one. And I did the very same technique, only I'm going to use the smaller stylus um, and a fresh puddle, like a little kind of puddle of white paint. You don't want uh, dried up paint. <gasps> Sorry, guys. I have the burps today. So this is like a, I don't know, see the difference? If you can see the difference of the balls. I don't know. I... I some of mine were a little big on that one, so I'm just going smaller. Try not to stick your hand in your berries. It's a very easily done thing. And I'm going to space these out a little, but um, do the same thing, variation of size. And once you get it filled in a little bit, you can start to put them closer together. And I'm putting some down in the snow, too. Um... I guess they should go on him as well, you know. They would be falling on him. So I'm putting a few everywhere. And I mean, again, don't get carried away. Like you don't want it to be just dots everywhere. That's all you notice. It's just subtle, but um, I think you get the idea. All right, I think actually I'm going to stop. I think I should stop because I got a little crazy. I think that's filled in. I'm going to put them side to side by side. I've already added uh, paper to the back of this because this is a paper mache piece. Um, it had a big sticker on it and it just pulled off and the paper was really rough and nasty looking. And that's what initially had me. I'm going to pull out of the shot a little bit. So I just found some kind of um, <coughs> worn looking, um, it's not, it was pattern paper, but it's uh, sheet paper. And just traced <clears throat> around the shapes and cut them out and glued them on the back. Just to make it, to finish it off. And then um, on this one, I um, had done the trim as well. Because I didn't like the uh, the edge, the edge was kind of plain, but I really like how, I don't want to stick my hand in that. I really like this um, as a snow uh, ribbon. The ribbon looks nice. Now, on this one, I have the hanger, so it's done. It's great. But this one, I had, had pulled the hanger off of it because I was doing it differently. So I think I'm just going to use one of the um, eye, eye uh, screws. Screw an eye screw in here. You can even tie a bow around it. But just use a little ribbon, and I found this other ribbon downstairs. Now, where did I put it? Um, of course, I can't find it. Anywho, it was, um, it's like white with gold through it. It was really cute. Um, so, this is what it looks like. Oh, we got to sign it, guys. And this is what I do. Can you see that? It says Sarah 14, like a sl Sarah, um... I don't know what you call that little hyphen, maybe, 14. And watch out again, because you don't want to put your hand in here. But I use my little, you can use a pen. If you really want to use a pen, it's just that sometimes I don't know if the varnish is going to smudge that. Because I've always used paint. I just use paint. I, I would use my black paint and that script liner brush. Get it nice and wet like ink, obviously, because you want to write your name. And this is dark green, actually, which is great. That'll be fine. I think that's what I used on the other one, too. Because I had it on my palette nice and wet. And then find a place. I mean, if you really don't want to sign the front, you can sign the back. You can sign the side. But definitely sign it. And I always like to put the year, at least. And I used to write my whole name. Then I just, like, had it. I tried a few things, but now I just write Sarah and the year, the tens and ones of the year, not the whole year. Sometimes I do write the whole year, but um, just make sure you sign it because 
it's your work. You did it. And um, I hope you enjoyed this. Hang it on your tree with pride. All right, let me sign this. And then I will say peace out. S-A-R-A. -A. And I'll put a little 14 down here. All right, looks like 114. But anyway, do it guys. Don't forget to varnish at least with one coat of varnish. Um, I might use the sparkle varnish on the front of this one this time. I used it on the back of this one and it is sparkly, it has glitter. Um, I usually just use a, a, a gloss varnish, which of course is not like right in front of me. Um, and we've talked about that before, here it is. Uh, gloss varnish for my Christmas stuff I use gloss but in general have a matte varnish as well this is matte this is gloss um, I like matte varnish I prefer matte varnish but with my Christmas stuff <coughs> I do tend to put a more glossy shimmery type thing because it's a Christmas thing you want it to shimmer and shine all right you guys I hope you enjoyed and I'll be back with more painting Thanks for watching.